and welcome. This is Christian Hurt. In this video series, we're going to create a really simple app to perform some AJAX operations. So this first episode, we're going to set up our ExpressJS application using Node.js, and then we'll use the uh, you know use this to build some REST APIs, very simple CRUD operations, and then we're going to move to the front end and create a very simple application as well to perform AJAX to consume these APIs. So uh, First, let's take a look at what this assignment is requiring us to do. So you can see we're going to build two parts. The first part is this Express app. The second part is we're going to use um, some Ajax calls. Um, and I'm going to do two separate uh, kinds. I mean, they're both Ajax, but one is using the uh, traditional vanilla JavaScript, you know, XML, HTTP request objects. And then we use the jQuery method as well, which is kind of very similar in a sense. But there's a subtle difference between the two. And you can pick and choose which one is more um, likable. Okay, so let's go down here to the. I want to show you the part two here, not this one. Um, the types. All right, so here is the things that we're going to build. So on the uh, back end, we are going to build these APIs about one, two, three, four, five, six functions to process these information here based on the uh, type that we receive and also at the particular endpoint or your uh, endpoint here. And then uh, these just show you what they are. You receive a get. These are usually for reading or making queries. A post is, is uh, the insert or the add. Put is update, delete, or just delete, right? Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go to Visual Studio Code and set up our application. So I'm going to create a new folder in here. I'll call this the unit 4. Um, or you can call it whatever you want. Unit 4 is good enough for me. I'm going to go to the terminal. And then here I'm going to initialize my application using node environment. So I'm going to give some space here. You just do npm init. <clears throat> and just accept the default here. Okay, If you don't I'm not requiring you to do anything here. Maybe just put your name for the author. That's good enough. And just hit enter all the way. So we are good here. So we get that done. Next, we're going to install some packages. So npm install uh, the express package. We need that. Also need the cores for the cross origin resource um, sharing. That allows us to uh, use Ajax calls to this backend uh, server. If you don't do that, it's not going to work using Ajax. And they also need the uh, body dash parser. This is in a package that allows us to use to parse data uh, from you know websites to the server. So you can you know uh, uh, parse like XML data, HTML data, text, or in this case, we're using JSON. Okay. And then finally, I also want you to use this package called nodemon uh, for no monitor. And what that does is when you see when you run the app, if you don't have that up and running, then every changes you make to your source code, you have to you know stop the server and then rerun it again to see the new uh, changes take effect. With the no monitor, it will do that automatically for you so you don't have to stop your programs. So it's kind of handy. Okay, so let's install all those. And hopefully they run without any issues. It may take a, a minute or two, depends how fast your connection is. But it shouldn't take very long. <clears throat> All right, so there are no problems. Just um, continue on. If there are any issues, usually they give you some instructions. You're just going to follow that. All right, so I got everything here. Then the next part is just to create my application file. So the first thing is again if you look at package.json it tells you that your main program starts at the main uh, <clears throat> attribute or main property starting with this index.js so this is kind of important okay so whatever you call here uh, usually your main application starts at that point so you want to have the same name if you want to change it something else like app.js then make sure your main app is called app.js okay so I'll just call it um, index.js so inside the unit for folder make sure I'm in there a new file called index.js and this is our main application so I can close this over here all right so um, we I'm going to close this for now 
to create your application, you need to import the express package. So uh, const express um, require the express package. We got that. Good to go. Next is instantiate an app to use the express server. <clears throat> and they also want to input the cores for the cross origin. And then finally the oops, the body parser. These are just variable names. You can call it whatever you want, okay? I just call that because it just makes sense. But the uh, packages are, yeah, that's important. It's body parser. These are the ones that we just installed. Okay. Now I need to create a port number. So port, I'll use 8080. I'll have a um, uh, server URL. I'll just call this, uh, maybe I call it server. At the, I use the backtick, HTTP, localhost at port number, port. Okay, whatever that is, right? In this case, it's 8080. All right, um, so those are pretty much just standard setup. And you can run the server right now. You can say app dot listen and listen to port number and then the second part is just anonymous function that um, you can put some information here you can put the curly braces like this or if it's just one single line you can just put right here in the console here console uh, log or log the message saying server is running at and then we'll put here the uh, URL which is the server variable. All right, so that is it for this part here. So the rest will be just um, APIs and uh, other code, okay? Rest of code, I'll put that here. And the first thing I wanna do just is to make sure that we actually able to access the server and the URL. So we use it very simple here. This is like um, just to test um, test server. I'm not doing any unit testing here. I'm just saying the test on the, on the web page. So app that uh, get the uh, root directory and we'll just show a very simple message. Request, response, I'm using error function here. And I'm just gonna send a message. So you can use like uh, end to send a message or you can use the write and make sure if you do write, just make sure you end it or you can use the send, right, a message, or you can, if you want to send a file, you use the send file, there's a lot of options. And the last option I want to use here is called JSON. Okay, we use that because, um, I'm, actually I'm gonna go up here and do a little more settings here. So I'm just put a message saying um, it's working. Well, okay, <clears throat> so, Right up here, I should do one more setting. Um, so we want to use that cores and stuff. So I'll just say app.use and just call the cores in here, function here. What that does is it allows us to um, access this site, this server from any domain. This one here, it's like it opens all the ports to every connection that it, it comes to. It doesn't really matter where the origin of that site comes from. And this is not a secure way to do it. We just do an example, so that's okay, but really you don't want to open that to the world, right? You want to block it. You only give access to a certain uh, domain or a certain IP address, okay? So this is for a course, um, again, for cross-origin resource sharing. And then I also want to use the, um, I want to encode any of the, uh, you know, document. So app that use and this is the body parser dot URL encoded and we're gonna say extended to false. Again, this is just some settings that you just have to um, memorize. And of course I don't remember this all the time. You just have to kind of like practice on it. And the more you use, the more it will it will come to your mind. If not, just put it somewhere and you pay uh, and then separate document and then just reuse it. 
and then finally you want to parse the JSON data. Okay, so this is just for parsing a JSON and app.use is also part of the uh, uh, body parser dot JSON and it just means all the data coming and going will be in JSON format. Okay, that's why I'm going to use the JSON here to send this out. Even though I put that just a single string, you, you could put something like in JSON format like this. So it would be like, for example, message and then key value pair, right? In JSON format, it would be like that, right? And it will send out of as the JSON format. And you'll see that on the, on the browser. So let's see if this is working correctly, all right? So let's go to the terminal, control J. And then down here, um, let's clear my console. And we're going to run the program using the node dot, I mean, no, and then index.js. So you run that. Hopefully there are no errors, and then you see that it's working. I'm just going to do it in control click to load the browser, and it's on a separate screen over here. I'm going to grab it. Okay, so you see that it's running, and this is the message that we receive in JSON, right? So that's working. Okay. Again, just a um, little quick review on the no monitor or the no mon. Okay, notice that if I make some changes in my code, in my source code, if I put here, it's working. Wow, right? But save that. And if I go to my browser and refresh it, you see that nothing changes here. Okay, this I don't see the new effect. New new changes take effect until you go back to your server here and then terminate that and then run it one more time. So each changes you make, each change you make to your source code, you're not gonna see the changes until you rerun or restart the server. And now if I go back and refresh it, you see that there it is. Alright, so to prevent this from happening, so save you a lot of time is to go back here and run it using the no mon. So cancel that and then type in node mon, hit enter, and you should see it's running in the background, uh, hopefully. Um, yeah, I have a, a few issues here. Uh, so if it's just a, an issue I have to fix here, but usually you, when you click on it when it runs, then it's going to run your terminal, your programmatic terminal, and the, any changes you make here, you don't have to re rerun, restart the server again. It will just work. I have to fix it um, once I turn this video off here, hopefully. But uh, so, so far, so good. We are good to go. Our server is created, running. And then uh, for the next part, we're going to come back in here and create our APIs for our server.